All right, Scopers, uh, bless you. We're coming in tonight, and we will be speaking on uh, uh, the the character traits of the spiritual father of of a spiritual father. And I want to greet each and every one of you that are, that are coming online. Um, uh, just you know, if I greet you, I want to see your names and and uh, which area you're from before we start. Are we really gonna have a tremendous time tonight? So greetings to bless to to uh, to all of you. Joy uh, to um, from Bledville, from Jacksonville areas. Bless you from Jacksonville, from Michael Knoxville, Maryland, uh, Nashville. Bless you, uh, my daughters Queenie, uh, Melly. Rajlin from Montreal, Houston, Texas, all oh, blessing to CPO from Houston, uh, from Atlanta, uh, from Nadia from Atlanta, Chicago, Illinois, uh, bless you, Delaware, De North Carolina, wow, bless you, man of God, from Toronto, what a blessing uh, to Stempa, whoa, tonight we're really going to have a great time from Conway, Arkansas, uh, blessings to you, uh, please, as you as you are coming in, just swipe and, and and left to right to 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 connect with your followers and down to up to for androids uh it's gonna be something lashon La we, we're having apostle cole and his wife that are here tonight bless you men of god i'm looking forward uh to to be with that man of god in two weeks i will be in Tampa. in two weeks from now we will be in Tampa touching the su subject of kingdom wealth what a blessing to 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 connect. He's a son of of, of Apostle John Eckhart, and and I've met him through Apostle Eckhart. What a tremendous man of God! So bless you, man of God, and looking forward to be with you. Uh, so I'm seeing people uh, coming in uh, um, uh, tonight, uh, sons and daughters, brothers in the Lord, ministers, and if you're new, just just tell me that this is your first time coming in. I'd like to see those that are the first time coming in. Uh, uh, Bishop Keith, blessing to your apostle. Well, bless you, Bishop Keith. Uh, apostle Hargett, greetings from North Carolina. Carolina, bless you, apostle. And uh, 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 so looking forward for tonight. Uh, the reason, the reason we've, we were we're having this scope, what 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 motivated this scope is uh, um, um, the fact that we had a Q&A uh, um, last week and so many questions were brought up concerning fathers. And, and I know in this season, we, we, there's so many, uh, 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 that, that revelation is coming out. People are speaking about fathers, sons and daughters, fathers. And, and I believe it, it's a revelation that is biblical. And that the first quote that we made on spiritual fathers, we spoke on the, on the authenticity, the biblical authenticity of, of spiritual fathers. But um, I, I feel tonight it will be so important for us to put clarity on on, on, on the traits because it, it so many people right now now have titles you know so now it's a title game everybody wants to be apostle prophet evangelist pastor and teacher and everybody likes the big titles but we do not know the tree by the name but we know the the tree by the fruits and it is important for us to put order in this disorder because right now too many people are speaking about titles. Uh, you know, some people are just transitioning from pastor to apostle uh, uh, just because it's a nicer title. And some people like the title father. You're the spiritual father, but but uh, it is not enough. And, and the church has become superficial because we, we use titles lightly. But, uh, but I pray that it will be a blessing, not just for the ministers, but also for 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 um for saints to understand because some of you truly have true fathers that are covering you, and it's important to respect the role of the work they're doing. And and some of you are are not under on, on the fathers, and you need to understand that the need of the father and to to know why it's important in your life. And I mean, yesterday, my daughter, uh, 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 Prophetess Monique Hobbs, everybody that is listening to me needs to go see that scope that she did last night on on sonship because we want to have balance as much as we want to talk about fathers it is important for each and every saint as much as leaders in the body of christ hears about sons 
Okay, and she spoke on that. She spoke on sonship yesterday, and and and, and I have her. I I shared her her scope on, on on Facebook, and a lot of you have seen it. And I believe that every minister needs to see the scope of my daughter, Prophetess Monique Hobbs from Chicago, that spoke candidly. I mean, this was real talk, real talk. It wasn't just about you know superficial stuff. She went deep. She spoke about her process and uh, and and her perspective of sonship as a daughter to to an, to, to an apostle so that scope was was incredible and you all need to go go read it uh, and 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 it's gonna be something uh, tonight all right so and I know that on also remember as we're doing that scope there will be some losers and some some idiots that's gonna try to distract you from from hearing what we're, you're supposed to hear tonight just just uh, just don't 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 mind them because I, I will not be looking at all the, the the what's written but but please concentrate in this message because you'll be blessed all right thank you apostle thank you prophetess for 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 that revelation and 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 your candidness of how uh, your process with, with Apostle Isaac, uh, with your dad was. So bless you. And, and I know it blessed a lot of people and it will bless some more. So I want all of you that are listening and that are here tonight, go and watch that scope of Prophetess Hobbs. So I greet everybody, every minister, every saint, and we want to start the teaching. Today, uh, today, I will speak on the character traits of a spiritual father character traits because it, we don't it's it's one thing to name yourself a, a father but 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 it's another thing to have the traits to have the character that it takes to be a father it's not just a title that you put on a card it's not just a title that you put on a card it's just it's not just saying you're a father but you need to have the character of a father and 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 it is important the first verse that I would want to touch tonight as we go inside to in that teaching is 1 Corinthians 4.15. And in 1 Corinthians 4.15, Paul speaks to the church of Corinth because they start having issues after he had, had established that church. He established a church, the church of Corinth, and they had issues. That church, that church had issues because they had many, many, many ministers coming to preach in, in Corinth. And they start to say, Apollos is my father. This one is my father. And Paul, the father of that church, the spiritual father of that church, spoke and said this. Uh, 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 Even if you have 10,000 masters in Christ, you do not have many fathers. For I have begotten you in Christ. I have begotten you through Christ in the gospel. So first of all, Paul built churches. Now understand, when we speak about Paul building, uh, 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 establishing churches, Paul did not establish some like the apostle we have now that have five people here and in, in, in a little area and they have 10 people here in another area and now they have four churches. Paul's churches were, were strong. Paul's churches grew up to be mature. So Paul is speaking here. Whoa, this is Elian Isaac. Uh, um, Prophetess Elian is here with us. And my wife is here. What a blessing. She she is in Montreal. And, I, and, I, and I'm blessed that she's listening. I didn't have a chance to see her yet. But but she's with us tonight. And, 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 and I'm blessed that you are here, sweetheart. Bless you. And, and looking forward to see you after, after the teaching. So Paul... Be established churches. The churches Paul established were not uh, superficial light, no power, no revelation, no depth churches. Because today we have people speaking of being apostles because they have many churches, but the churches are all weakling churches. Paul was able to establish a church in a year and a year and a half, and that church had all the giftings functioning, all the giftings manifesting. So he's speaking to that church. So we need to be careful. He's speaking to a church he fathered, he established. It was a, it was a powerful church. He, he, it was a strong church. So Paul, speaking to that church, he said, you can have many masters, 
Many ministers that can come and teach, that can come and, and release a revelation, that can even impart to you a specific area of revelation. But even, have, even if you have many masters, there is only one father. You have only one spiritual father. So the last teaching, I was speaking on many masters, one father. Many masters, one father. You can have many ministers that are ministering to you, to you through scope, through teaching, through books, and all those good things. But you can have many masters, but it's important to know who's your spiritual father. Many masters, one father. And I have an issue with people that have many fathers. Spirit, my spiritual father for, for power, my spiritual father for anointing, my spirit, spiritual father for intercession, my spiritual father for grace. Come on. You have many masters, but you only have one spiritual father. There's a, there's a difference. The master, my daughter was speaking about that yesterday. The master, or some of you are calling it mentor, although I have an issue with that, with that word mentor. But a master, a teacher, can teach you certain, certain truths. They can help you in certain areas of your of, of your growth, but the but the spiritual father has the spiritual authority on your life. When the when when Israel messed up, uh, Moses, who was the spiritual authority of, of Israel, was able to stand in front of God and speak to God con concerning Israel. Your spiritual father, you cannot mess up the, the, and start messing up the, making a difference between masters and ministers that are ministering to you through books, through, through school, through all of those things, and, and with your spiritual father. He has an authority on your life. He can stop heaven and talk to God because of your issue, because of his role. So you, you need to, to, to understand that you can have many masters, but one father. One father. Don't mess up those things. And I know this is very popular here in, in the Western world to just swipe fathers whenever we want and, and change fathers. And, 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 and my daughter yesterday was speaking about rent a father. Oh my God. Rent a father. You got to go see that scope. She spoke on, 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 on sonship and now sons are renting a father. They have you for a specific time until you correct them. And after you correct them, you, they, they feel and they receive from, from not the Holy Ghost, but, but, but the, the devil to change church. Renting fathers. So you can have many masters, but one father. So beware about, about swiping fathers as you are swiping clothes. One father, many masters. You can have ministers that are blessing you, that are a blessing to your life, a blessing to your family. But there are only one father, many masters, one father. You cannot rent a father. Oh, just give me some hearts right there for my daughter, Prophet Esau. You all better connect with her by Periscope and connect with her. She will continue the teaching tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, uh, 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 at, at probably around 9 uh, Central or 10 Central, she will continue on Sonship. But you need to, to, to connect with her. So a spiritual father cannot be swiped. You have one. Many masters one father. Let us say that together. Many masters, one father. Many masters, one father. Many masters, one father. I want to see you. Just let's let us say that together. Many masters, one father. One. That's right. One. Tracy and Allison. That's right. One. Many masters, one father. That's right. That's right. There, there, there it is right now. Many queen. That's right. Many fathers, one. Many masters, one father. Many masters, one father. There you go. Because it's important. The enemy is playing games in this season. But the ones that are mature in the Lord will know that we have many masters, only one father. One father. We don't, we, he can have an issue with him because he preached something we didn't like. We can have issue with him because he rebuked us. We can have issue because he corrected us. We can have issue, but we are covenant. Let us say that together. We are covenant. When we find our father, it is for life. We are covenant. We are covenant. Many masters, one father. We respect the masters, but we understand the role of our father. So what are the traits? What are the traits? 
What are the traits of a spiritual father? The first, the first character traits, trait of a spiritual father, the spiritual father desires and works to see us reach our destiny. A true spiritual father will desire and work to see you reach your destiny. That's his desire. This is what Paul said when he said, I have begotten you in the gospel. So literally, Paul is saying that I didn't just bring you to the Lord, but I have, I have helped you to find your destiny. I help you find your destiny and I work with you in your process in reaching your destiny. So the father helps you to recognize your destiny, to know your identity in Christ. People of God, our identity in Christ is not just saying that, that I'm a child of God. It's not enough. You need to know why you're breathing, why you're taking oxygen, why are you alive, why are you in Christ? You are not just in Christ to come to church every week, every Wednesday, every Sunday, but what is your purpose? What is your mandate on this planet? There's a mandate on each and every saint. So so the, the, the father helps the son. He desires. The father has a yearning. He has a desire to see the son reach his He's his destiny. Destiny. Destiny is important for a father. The father, the true father, will fervently desire and work for you to reach your destiny. The preaching, the teaching, the counsel, the corrections are given for you to reach your test destiny. The true father will help you find your identity. And by his impartation and by his teaching, his counseling, his corrections, he will help you process toward your destiny too many saints are church goers and have no clue why they're in christ yesterday we had service you know how many people yesterday sunday morning came to church and they absolutely don't know their destiny you know how many yesterday yesterday there's 40 just in the united states there are 40 million christian Believers, I will not say Christian, believers. Why? Because believers, you believe in Christ, but Christian, you do the work that Christ was doing. So a lot of people in church are believers. You have not even reached the level of Christian because a Christian do what Jesus did. This is why the word said in, 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 in Acts eleven twenty six that the, 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 the Gentiles call the disciples Christians because they were doing what Christ was doing. So yesterday, yesterday in church, religious people coming, but they have no clue of their destiny. A true father desires to see you reach your destiny. He desires for you to reach your destiny. It's not enough to go to church and cheerlead a man and his family to reach his destiny. Listen to this. It is not enough for us to go to church to cheerlead A, a man and his family for them to reach their destiny but we go to church when we go to church we go for a download so that we can really receive impartation we can receive prophetic direction for us to be who God calls us to be so please you cannot just be wasting your time cheerleading there's so much time for you to chill in. Here then comes a time where you desire to reach your destiny. A true father is not about his destiny. But his destiny is to make sure you reach your destiny. Oh, I'm going to say that again. You should just tap the hearts right there. Just, just right there for that. A true father, his destiny, his destiny is to see and work and teach and preach for you to reach your destiny. Your destiny. No, you're not giving me some heart. So I don't know if you're blessed tonight. It seems that that you're very, uh, 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 very frugal on the heart. But if you're blessed with that word, a true father, his destiny is to see you reach your destiny. A true father will identify, train so the saints so they can be mandated and sent out. To reach their destiny. I'm going to say that again. A true father will identify, train the saints so that they can be mandated and sent out to reach their destiny. So a true father, first of all, is, is working, is desiring for his sons and daughters to reach their destiny. 
But second of all, a true father, listen to this one, listen to this one. A true father is not intimidated by your by the, the son's mandate, by his gift, or by the calling on his life. A true father is not intimidated by the son's mandate, his gift, his calling. A true father is not intimidated by, by, by your gift. If, if you're a true father, you don't, you're not intimidated because your son has the gift of miracle. You're not intimidated. I have one of my spiritual sons. He's called as an evangelist. If your feet is too short, he can say in the name of Jesus and your feet grows. I'm the one that pushes him. I cannot be intimidated by his gift. He's my son. He's my son. So if you're a true father, you you have to let your, your your sons and daughters grow. A true father will want to see you grow. You know, a true father will give you space to preach. You know, there's an issue in the body of Christ. We 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 have ministers that are young ministers that are called, but we don't give him a space to grow. We don't even give him time to preach. Give him a chance to go through his training. You can you you how can you mature when you never have a chance to minister? You never have a chance to do anything. If you're a true father, you're not intimidated by the grace of your sons and daughters, but you want to see them grow. You want to see them minister. You want to see them uh, fulfill their destiny you want to see them work their gift you give them a platform you give them an opportunity for them to grow in their giftings so if you are a true father and you're choking your son your son never have a chance he's never ready he always have an issue you always have to to tell him to wait another two years another three years another five years how long when will you preach when will you cast out your first your first devil you cannot cast out your first devil when you're 65 by the time you're 65, something is wrong. You've been in the ministry for 15, 20 years. When will you be ministry? When will you be able to cast the devil? Something is wrong. And we're saying we're apostolic. No, a true father will give you a chance. He will give you a chance. A true father gives a chance to the saints to grow. Remember the Lord in Matthew 10, let the disciples go two by two. They waited a year to a year and a half looking at Jesus doing ministry. But after a year and a, and a year and a half, they start, they, Jesus sent them out to minister two by two. Two by two. And they were shocked that the same anointing that was on Jesus was on them. So in Luke 10, 18, 19, they said, Lord, we're freaking out. Lord, we're casting out devils. We're healing the sick. Wow, what's going on? And Jesus said, calm down. Just be happy and glad that your name is written in the book of life. But why? Because, because sometimes you give them a platform and they cast their first devil and they think they're Mr. Deliverance. Oh, I'm preaching now. Yeah, let's put balance. When, when the minister, true father, gives you the opportunity to minister, gives you the opportunity, don't start freaking out because you have casted one devil. You prophesied once and now you believe you're a prophet. So... So when they give you that opportunity, stay humble. That's why Jesus told those disciples, relax your mind. All right? Relax your mind. Calm yourself. You cast out one devil. Doesn't mean you're yet an apostle. You're still a disciple. All right? But a true father is not intimidated by your gift. A true father is, is not intimidated by the anointing on your life. I still remember when, when my pastor, Pastor Jean-Claude, you know, I, he gave us space to minister. He gave the youth space to minister. Every, every fourth or fifth Sunday was the youth service and we were able to minister and, and we could preach on Tuesdays and we, were, we would preach on, on Fridays. I mean, there was so many places. And I thank the Lord for his life because this man was a, was a blessing for me to help me become who I've become because he gave me a, a place, a place, a sp sorry, a space. He gave me a platform for me to be able to minister. How do you want them to grow if you never give them the opportunity? Some people are, are growing old in on the pews, never having a chance, an opportunity to minister. But a true father is not intimidated by your mandate, by your gift, by the calling on your life. Number three, a true father is not jealous of your success. Oh my God. A true father is not jealous 
Give me some hearts right there. A true father is not jealous of your success. When you succeed, he celebrates your success. When, when you succeed, when you have success, the true father is the first one up front cheerleading what you're doing. A true father, when you're ministering, he's in joy. He's the first one that sees the man. He doesn't look at you like this when you're preaching and you say, and the people are clapping, you start looking at the people. Why are you clapping? This little brother, I'm the, I'm the apostle in this house. I'm the big guy here. I'm the one in charge. Why are you, why, why are you, why are you blessed because he just preached? No, a true father, he will be happy. He will be celebrating. He will be, oh, that's right, my son. Come on, you can do it. That's a true father. He will have joy. I still remember when one of my son evangelist Frankie, I told him, this is your season. It's time to preach. It's time for you to take care of the youth. And his first youth service, he, he was inside, of, of, he was inside of, the, of, of his office and he started crying. And he started freaking out because he said, I'm, I'm stressed. I don't know how I'm going to do it. I, I, I'm not going to make it. I said, I, I looked at him. I said, look evangelist he look frankie you have the anointing you have the power you have the revelation you have the grace go with the power of god that anointing in the house is residing on you now go and get the job done but people of god when he took that mic the power of god shall shall start hitting the people he preached a word released the anointing and he he that was his jump start now he just came back from malawi he just came back from Malawi. The, he spoke on societal reform, the message of his father. He completely shocked the people of Malawi. He's going back and they want to reunite thousands of pastors. Thousands and thousands of people to hear him preach. Why? Because there was a father when he was nervous that told him you can do it. I didn't choke his gift, but I gave, the, I gave him a platform. Now... Let me hear, let me tell you this. I'm an apostle. I have I have I have many elders in this house in Montreal. If you want to go and, and see what we're doing, you can go in, on my site, patrickisaac.com. But I want to I want to tell you this. I can sometimes I do f four months without preaching in the local house here. Four months. Four months. Not because I'm doing work outside, but I'm in the house. But I sit and I let the sons minister. I let the sons release the power. Some ministers, the only time somebody else preach on Sunday is because they're absent. You cannot be a father. If you're intimidated by the gift and if you're jealous of the success of your sons. So I, I could do four months sitting and letting them minister. And you know what? In those four months... People are blessed. The church continue to grow. The tithes and offering skyrocks. So it's, it, they are truly anointed. They are not just trying to replace Apostle Isaac, but the power of God, the anointing, the grace is on their life. A true father is not jealous of your success. A, a true father will let you minister. Jesus said to the disciple, you will do greater works that, than, than what I've done. A true father will recognize that his sons will go further than him. You don't have a joy as a father if all your sons and daughters are under you in, in what they're accomplishing. But a true father will desire to see his sons and daughters reach other heights, greater heights. So it's important. So a true father is not jealous of your success. You know, and you, you, some of y'all, you have true fathers because they let you minister, they let you grow, and you need to be thankful for that. For, so a true father is not jealous of your success. You see another important key, number four. Number four, a true father. You see, a true father does not see a crowd. He sees individuals. A true father doesn't see a crowd. He sees individuals. A true father will see each and every individual. He will want to see each and every individual in his ministry reach their destiny. He's not just happy because there's a mass of people that are in front of him. He's happy when you reach your destiny. But then some of you will say, yeah, but apostle, what if we, how, how, can, how can people reach his de their destiny in a mega church? Well, you see, when, when some fathers are called to have a mega church, 500, 1,000, 2,000, 10,000, 15,000, 100,000. But when you have a mega church, here, 
there, that's when the revelation of the apostolic comes. Because if you're a true father and you have a, a mega church that you are called to father, you will raise up an apostolic team of elders that are able now to make sure that every individual in that mega church is taken care of. My God. How can you take care of, of, of a thousand, two thousand people with a pastor and his assistant? So clearly, the people in front of you are an audience. And I know, and I'm touching some hard stuff, but because it's the truth. It's the truth. Because the Lord wants to see each and every son and daughter reach their destiny. This is the will of God. That doesn't mean the true father is going to eat lunch with you at McDonald's. All right. That doesn't mean he's gonna. He, the, the, the true father is going to put you put you to bed at, at, at night. That's the role of your biological father. But a true father will through his teachings and to and, and through through his preachings and counseling and the staff of elders that he has raised up is able to make sure that each and every individual reaches their destiny. So you can start with one elder. But as you grow the ministry, you're called to raise other apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Here comes the, the revelation of the apostolic. And they, they are grown themselves so that they be able to minister to the sons and daughters through the anointing of the Father. So that's when you start having an apostolic team. An apostolic team that are able to take care of each and every son. A true father does not see a crowd. He's not just blessed because a crowd is in front of him. He's blessed because number 442 in the crowd. Number 321. Number 10,040 is taken care of. This is the will of God. Because God has given a destiny. God has given a mandate to each and every person in the body of Christ. So a true father does not see a crowd. He sees individuals. You see, this is when Jesus says in John 10, 14, I am the good shepherd and I know my sheep. I know, I know. So he speak about a, a, a knowledge that is deep. It's not a superficial knowledge. When Jesus speaks about, about knowing his sheep here, he's not talking about just knowing you in the crowd. He's talking about a, a knowledge, a personal, a deep knowledge of that person. So if you have a mega church, yes, the apostle cannot know number 10,020, but he can build up an apostolic team that are able to minister to each and every person in this crowd. So if you have a 10,000 um, mega church, uh, 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 you cannot have two elders. You you can you will have a thousand elders. Oh, now I'm preaching right there. A thousand that are equipped, equipped. Chief of fifty, chief of 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 a hundred, chief of a thousand. Why? So that their each and every situation is taken care of. Because a true father does not see a crowd, but he sees individual. You see, a true father will be patient. A true father will be patient in your process. 2 Corinthians 12, 12 says the true, truly the sign of an apostle were accomplished among you by patience through all trials. That's in the, in, in the French version that I translated for you. So truly the sign of an apostle were accomplished among you by patience through all trials. So, so the, 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 a, a true father does not abandon his, his sons. He knows that you don't reach maturity overnight. A true father will understand that you will miss it. You will mess up. Sometimes you will be carnal. Sometimes you will be fleshly. You understand? That's a true father. He knows that the, he will be patient in your process. He knows that he won't quit on you. You see, a true father doesn't quit on you. You, you can quit on him, but the true father will not quit on you. The true spiritual father will be patient in your process toward the fulfillment of, of, of your destiny. So he will walk it with you. He will be patient with you. He will, you miss it and, and he will forgive you. He will be calm. He will accept it, you know, and he will tell you something 50 times. 50 times. He will have to repeat you the same thing and be patient. He will not crush you. He will not cast you out, cast you away, because he's a father. A father has a father's heart is a patient heart. He he doesn't quit. He he wait on you. 
He, he, he will wait for you to explain him what, you, what you're dealing with. He's patient with you. He's patient with your mistake. He, he's, he's, he's patient with your flesh. He knows you're carnal sometimes. Sometimes I, I speak to, to sons and you tell them they're in the flesh and they, no, they, 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 but, no, but you're in your flesh. And you have to be patient to explain them why they're in their flesh or, or, or for what you mean by they're in their flesh, but they're in their flesh. My daughter spoke to me yesterday about that. You know how hard it was for her. When prophetess Saul spoke to you, let me give you my version of, 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 of dealing with, with a prophetess. Me, when I spoke to her, it was hard for her flesh. Like she said, she used to cry. Cry because I told her she's in her flesh. But 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 I, I, patient with her. I told her she's in her flesh. She didn't like it. Sometimes she would be quiet on, on the phone and, and, and would not answer when I'm saying. I said, are you here? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I said, I didn't, I, I didn't hear. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I said, answer, are you here? It, yes, 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 apostle. That's right. You're here. What I just, just told you is right. You're in your flesh. And I'm being patient with, with, with that side. You preach good. You, 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 you prophesy addresses and names. But now I'm dealing with your character. Because we don't have issues right now with gifts of Christ. We have issues with character of Christ. And my call is to see her reach her full destiny. That's a father. He'll be patient with you. I don't see no horse right there. <laughs> It's okay. I understand. <laughs> I see prophet is showing some, some eyes. What do you mean by showing some eyes? Why are you sending eyes? You should send your both hands up. That's what I want, I want to see you doing. So a true father knows you'll make mistakes. You'll be in your flesh sometimes. But he will be patient with you. He will see you go through your process. He won't cast you out because you missed it. Number six, a true father forgives. A true father forgives. He doesn't hold the son in his heart. You see, a true father knows that sometimes you will offend him. Some, sometimes you'll be in your flesh and you will hurt him. Not just offend him, sometimes you hurt him. Okay, Knowing that you are not the Holy Ghost. You will make some voluntary and involuntary mistakes. So number six, a true father will forgive. A true father will forgive. You will offend him, you will hurt him, but he will find place in his heart to forgive you and not hold you in his heart. Notice when the prodigal son came back, his father was happy. He was in joy because the prodigal son came back. He didn't say, are you after what you've done to me? You're coming back. I'm going to rip your head off. Oh, you lost nothing. So now you're coming. Eh? The father of the prodigal son didn't say, oh, you lost everything. Now you're coming to me. I am giving you nothing. You will, you, you will, be, you will be nothing in this house. You, you, you have humiliated me. So now you're getting nothing. What he did, the word said that the father ran toward the prodigal son. And he was willing to, to take him back. He was willing to take him back. Jesus. Oh, I'm going to tell you that. Jesus didn't simply forgive Peter. You see, when Jesus, when Peter betrayed Jesus. Listen to that. When Peter betrayed Jesus, he didn't just forgive him. But he, Jesus did not put his feet on the destiny of Peter. He knew that Peter would mess up, but that, that did not forfeit the destiny of Peter. When the time came to choose who was going to be the leader of the church of Jerusalem, Jesus, that was betrayed by, by Peter, put Peter in charge of the church of Jerusalem. What a deep dimension of forgiveness. Lord, help us. To have that, that capacity to forgive. Jesus was had such a powerful uh, uh, dimension of forgiveness. That he was able to forgive Peter. And still put Peter in charge of the church of Jerusalem. My God. Where are those fathers? Let us just pray and believe God for that dimension of true spiritual fathers today. 
So it's important for the father. A father number six is able to forgive. But you see also a father, a father is compassionate. A father is compassionate. A father is compassionate. What is compassion? Compassion is love in action. Love in action. A true father is not just sympathetic of your pain and of your issues. But a true father is empathetic. He has empathy. What is the difference between sympathy and empathy? You see, sympathy, you're in a hole and you're crying. And the person that has sympathy will cry with you in the hole. But the person that has empathy, a father that has empathy will do what it takes. Will try to find a way. He will find solutions for you to come out of your situation. A true father cannot leave his son in the hole. He will do what it takes for you to come out of your hole. That's a true father. He has compassion. Look at Matthew 14, 14. When Jesus went out and saw a great multitude, Matthew 14, 14. When Jesus went out and saw a great multitude and he, and he was moved with compassion for them and healed their sickness. Jesus was so moved with compassion, but look what compassion did. That compassion, the love that Jesus had brought him, pushed him to heal them. When you have compassion as a father, you desire to fix the problems of your sons and daughters. You want to see them taken care of. Listen, one day I had a son that came. That sister came and, and she said, uh, 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 Apostle, please pray for me. I just received a job as a security guard and, 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 and I don't have money. Uh, I have just a week to find a way to buy the shoes uh, to buy the shoes, uh, uh, the, 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 the construction boots to, 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 uh, to start my job as a security guard. And he said, please, Apostle, pray for me and, and release that anointing for God to open a door for me to find the, 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 the money for those construction boots. He said, please pray for me. I said, no, I won't pray for you. She, she said, Apostle, you will not pray for me? I said, no, I won't pray for you. He said, Apostle, why wouldn't you want to pray for me? I said, I won't pray for you for, for you to, to find money to buy the boots. Here is the money. Buy the boots. I gave her the money. Because, because why should I pray for, for something I can fix as a father? I gave her the money. And, and I gave her the money and she bought the boots. And you could see that, that lady crying, shocked because I gave her that money that she needed to buy the boots. A true father will desire to see how. He can take care of problems. Of course, we cannot take care of every need because we are not the bank and, 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 and we are not the, 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 the harvest of, of the Lord. You know, we are not uh, uh, we, the, the yard of the Lord full of, of, of money to, to bless every saint. But when we have the capacity, it's our job. To do what it takes to take care of a problem. A true father has compassion. There's, no, there's a problem when ministers are good preachers. They can preach good. They can teach good. But afterwards, they really don't care. They, don't really, they really don't care about your problem and your issues. As much as you come on Sundays, pay your tithes, and, and make sure you give money, and make sure you clap when they preach, and you, and you do what they tell you to do in, in making sure you, you, you follow them. They don't really care if, if, you, if you die before your time. They don't care. But a true father. There's some. There, there are fathers out there. But the true father will be compassionate. They, will, they have a problem. When you're crying, they're crying. Some leaders, they don't have time to cry for your need. They don't cry. Come, sit down, clap, touch three people, shout hallelujah, flip out, fall under the power, pay your tithes and offering, and you're good. But all your issues and your problem, keep them and please be quiet. Come religiously every Sunday because this is what we do. No, that's not what we do. We need true fathers. It's the season for us to have true fathers in the body of Christ. A true father has compassion. Luke 15 verses 3 and 4. The, the, the parable of the lost sheep. The father will leave 99 sheep to go find and take care of a hurting one. A true father will, will leave 99 and, and, go, and go take care of, of a lost sheep. A sheep that has an issue, that has a problem, that is hurt. Understand, 
Again, I repeat it. You might have a big church and don't have the capacity to take care of all of them. But since you're apostolic, you will have an apostolic team to make sure that you have maybe 20 pastors. You have, you have 15 prophets. You have 20 evangelists. You have 25 prophets. You have an apostolic team of five full ministers that are able to take care of the needs. It's still the action of the Father. He might not be able to reach you, but he, send, he shall send another elder to make sure that you're touched. But a true Father cannot be uh, 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 completely uh, uh, careless because uh, of, your, of your problem, of your sickness, of their sickness. So this is why as much as... as us as as ministering on television is good right now you're receiving message on television on periscope that's all good but a true father you need to have a touch you need to have a contact because sometimes you need problems you can have issues you can have contact you, with them you might not you can might, he doesn't have to touch you physically but he can he can have ministers ministry because in this generation we will have to know how to minister differently I have some some of my elders that are having a, a, a pastoral of pastoral calls to take care of problem and release the power and heal people through the Skype. But one thing that is sure, the problems needs to be taken care of. A true father has compassion, has compassion for the saints, has compassion for the saints. It's not enough for him to just preach and teach. And after he preach, he comes and preach. Release the word, and when he finished releasing the word, he doesn't even have time to, to hold your hands or nothing, or, or, or not hold your hand, but greet you because he's too powerful. He's under the strong anointing, and he, and he runs out because he has the power of the Holy Ghost. He's the man. He's the man. Well, Jesus was able to eat at the house of Zacchaeus. The same Jesus that could minister in front of 15,000 15, was able to go and eat with Zacchaeus. Am I saying a man of God should not have bodyguards? Yes, because right now we, we are some crazy people that will want to kill you. Listen, even what I'm saying right now, not everybody's happy about that type of teaching. So don't think you're going to come to Montreal and you have, you're going to have easy access to Apostle Isaac. My, my staff will take you out because there's some crazy fools out there. So a minister needs to have, to have an entourage, to have, to have people around him. But not because you have an entourage that you cannot greet, you cannot talk, you cannot have a connection with people. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So we will have balance. Jesus preached in front of 15,000, but he was also the one that went at Zacchaeus' house. Listen, Jesus had protocol. In John, 9, John 12, verses 19 and 20. John 12, verses 19 and 20. We will see how the Greeks wanted to see Jesus. When they wanted to see Jesus, you better invite your followers right now. That revelation is, is going to bless you. It's just just bring your friend bring your friends right now swipe your followers that's right butterfly mel born for two this one bless you pastor lena oh bless you my daughter from 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 making georgia bless you that's right send your followers right now listen to that revelation because as much as the father can be compassionate and be and be connectable he can connect with others but listen to this a true father it's not because you 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 can connect to people that you don't have protocol you can have protocol because Jesus in John 12, 19 and 20, they wanted, the Greeks wanted to see Jesus. And listen what the word said. The Greeks wanted to see Jesus and they went to speak to Philip. Philip went to speak to Andrew and Andrew and Philip went to see Jesus. So those Greeks didn't have full access to Jesus. Verse 20, 21, 22 in this, in this side. So they didn't have complete access to Jesus. Because the Greeks wanted to see him, they spoke to Philip and said, Lord Philip, we want to speak to Jesus. Philip spoke to Andrew and Andrew and Philip spoke to Jesus. So we can have protocol and don't think it's carnal to have protocol because sometimes the, the crowd would come close, but the leaders were around Jesus. The apostles were around him. But even if you have protocol, even if you have security, because there's crazy people there's fools out there. Listen, people of God, 
I had three people come in gu with guns in PQL to shoot me. Three of them. There's at least two people that came with, 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 with knives to stab me. So believe me. If somebody come down in Montreal to try to come to try to come to to Apostle Isaac, I'm telling you, I have I have some of my guys. They are just waiting to rip somebody's neck. The same way Abishai wanted to rip the head off of of Shimei when he wanted to be, to touch David. So so it's important to have protocol. But even when you have protocol, a true father has compassion. He wants to connect with people. You don't just preach and leave all the time. Connect with your people. Get close to them. You know what I'm saying? Something's wrong. You're so big. You're, some of you, you have, you have 20 people you cannot connect. What's going on with you? I know a minister. He has 20 people here in Montreal. And he has no time to speak to the saints. I, I mean, what's wrong with you? You have 20 people. Why can't you speak to them? I remember when I, when I started I started my ministry with six people. We didn't even have a mic. We started in the basement of my mom after my pastor blessed me. Pastor Jean-Claude, I started ministry with, 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 with six people. And, and when I had six people, what protocol? I can speak with them. I mean, you have 20 people and you don't have time to speak with the saints. No wonder your ministry can grow. Have some compassion. Connect with people. I mean, they're here in Montreal. They have six, you have six people out of the six. You have three bodyguards. And, and, and then you have your son, your, your biological son and your biological, biological, biological uh, daughter. And you have problems to connect with people. That's right. Like one of, of the people saying, you're, you're untouchable. What do you mean? What's going on? Connect. You have compassion. You want to fix their problem. You want to take care of their needs. A true father is compassionate. He's, he has compassion for, 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 the, the, for his sheep. But notice, number eight, a true father loves without ulterior motives. Let me say that again. A true father loves without ulterior motives a true father loves without ulterior motives what do i mean by that a true father loves without ulterior motive he doesn't bless you he doesn't greet you speak to you for a return of investment some ministers they speak only to the people that have money in the church when you have money you can speak to them oh yeah i i just preach right there some ministers, they preach and they teach only, uh, they, they talk to only people that have money. If you don't have money, I don't speak to you. Because I want to return every time I speak. I want to return every time I preach. Come on. A true father, he bless you. He greets you. He takes care of you without ulterior motive. He loves you without any ulterior motive. Notice Colossians 3 verses 23. Colossians 3 23 says, And whatever you do, do it heartily. Ask to the Lord and not to men. When you do something as a minister, you do, you do it unto the Lord, not unto men. So, so you, don't, you don't have to desire the money of the person. A true father, he bless you. He doesn't want your car. He doesn't want your money. He doesn't want your wife. He doesn't want what you have. What he wants, what a true father wants is to see you blessed. Is to see you reach your destiny. Is to see you fulfill the plan of God on your life. Understand, does that mean that a true father should not be blessed? Does that mean you should not honor the father? Does that mean you should not release you? Should should not bless him when he when he blesses you. Yes, I will speak on that on the honor that that sons and daughters need to bring to a father. Maybe 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 my spiritual daughter will speak about that when he speaks when she will speak about sonship. But the truth of the matter is that a true father blesses you without ulterior motive. I still remember when when we started ministry and we were casting out devils for two three hours. I would start ministering the fellowship on Saturday night at seven in a three in the morning. I was I would still be casting out devils. I would still be 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 uh, 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 speaking to people, and I would go home and listen, people of God. So you don't freak out, and don't, you don't open your mouth when a man of God is blessed. I would finish doing that for those saints. I would go home, and me and Elian, Prophet Elian, we would drink sugar water. And have no money to take care and, 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 buy, and buy diapers for my son. And I want you to understand. I'm an accountant by profession. I left $65,000 in 1997 to start ministry full time. So I know what it is to minister to people. 
and they have no thankfulness. No thankfulness. But a true father, he does this with all his heart. No ulterior motive. He doesn't want, uh, he doesn't do it for the return. Now it's your, it's your work. It's, it, if you want to be blessed, you need to bless him. You need to know how to bless a father. Because, Sam, because Saul, when Saul went to see prophet Samuel, he said, I cannot, in Samuel 9, 6, he said, 9, 6, he said, I cannot go see Samuel, the prophet, if I don't bless him. I cannot go see a man of God if I don't bless him. It is, the, it, it is important for you as a son to know when you go see a man of God, you need to bring something. It doesn't make sense that the minister is blessing you, is casting out your devil, and you don't know how to bless him. But a true father, he doesn't love you with any ulterior motives. Because we're speaking about the traits, the character traits of a true father. The character traits of the true father. A true father, he does not bless you because he want to return. He does it with all his heart. He casts your devils and he's blessed because you're delivered. He's like, he's like prophet Elijah. E e e prophet Elisha. Remember prophet Elisha? When he finished healing Naaman. Naaman told, me, told him, what can I give you? He said, no, for you, on this case, in this particular case, you can, you can just go. Because he had no ill ulterior motives to bless him. A true father does not minister to people, to sons and daughters with an ulterior motives. But he blesses you with all his heart. But at the same time, to put balance, even when he bless you with all your heart, even if he blesses you with all his heart, you are called to bless him. You are called to know, to be thankful, to bless him when he blesses you. A true father. Blesses you without an ulterior motive. Speaking about the traits of a true, a true father. Verses 9. A true father always presents. Always. The true father is always present. Is always there when you're in trouble. You say if you're a true father. You cannot be absent. When your saint is going through his hardest trial. You cannot be absent. When he's, he's going through what is his ordeal. There's a problem. Now we have superstars. We have Hollywood ministers. They don't want to be there when you have trouble, when you have issues. They don't care about your issues. You're going through some tough time. That's not their problem. That's not their problem. But you see, a true, a true father is not only there when all is well, but much more when all hell breaks loose in your life. A true father, when all hell breaks loose in your life, the true father is there. The true father is, is present. He wants to be there. You see, Proverbs 17, 17 says, The friend loves in all time. But in adversity, he acts like a brother. The true father is, is you can see the true father in the adversities of, of, of a son. The problems of a son. The problems of a son. A true father will want to stand in your problem. He will be there for you. He will be there for you. You see, it's not all is well that you see a real father. A father, you see him when you're in trouble. When you have issues. When you're absent, I remember the story of a lady that came in this ministry. That lady was absent for the, from the church for six months. Six months. She was absent from her church for six months. And for six months, nobody called her. Nobody knew where she was. Nobody cared. Imagine, you're ministering in a church, you're part of a ministry, you bless that ministry, you give your time in that ministry, and you're absent for six months and nobody calls you? Something is wrong. Something is wrong. And this is why we need apostolic ministry. To raise up ministers so the saints can receive ministry. So the saints can, can be perfected, can be taken care of. That's why Ephesians 4, 11, 12 speaks about 
Ephesians 4 11 speaks of uh, the Lord gave some apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the perfecting of the saints and the edification of the body of Christ. So those ministers need to be raised up so that somebody cannot be in a ministry and example be part of the ushering team and leave and be sick and be on the sick bed for six months and nobody gives her a call. A true father is present, is there when you have issues. He's there when going through some tough times. A true father, when you're in tough times, he might not come personally, but he will release. A son, a daughter can be released to go and take care of your needs. Because some of you are very small nature. I call that small nature. Yeah, but, but pastor so and so, but I did not see apostle. Well, apostle send pastor. If pastor is there, apostle is there. There's a problem when you guys start getting getting all flaky and want apostle to be there in, in every trouble. When I speak about him being there when in, you're in trouble, if he, if he has a larger ministry, he might not be there himself, but he has raised an apostolic team that are able to be there. So some of you don't start being flaky. You know, there's some f funny religious people in church. When they come in church and they say, I want to meet apostle. I don't want to meet Pastor George. I don't want to meet prophet, prophet anointing. I don't want to meet evangelist saved souls. I want to meet apostle. Well, well, shut your mouth, okay? You don't have a real problem. Because if you had a re real problem, the elders are anointed. They have the power of the Holy Ghost. They have the gift of discernment. They can take care of your, pro of your problem. This is why some fathers are, 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 for, are going through burnout. They're dying before their time. They're, they're killing themselves. They're quitting ministry. Why? Because you have those fools and so those jokers that want the, the apostle, the set man of the house, to do everything. You want to kill him. That devil is a liar. I'm not going to die before my time. I need to see my kids grow and I need to see the kids of my kids. If I raise up an eldership with powerful apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, I can release them for them to be a blessing to each and every individual in the ministry. If you're blessed, I want to see some hearts right now. If I didn't speak, I know I spoke right there for some ministers. Some pastors that are here with us, some, some, some apostles that are there, prophets that are there that are choked, that are tired because those flaky fools come to church. I want to meet the set man. Well, we're going to send you out. Not, we are not going to apostolo you, but we're going to send you out because you don't have a real problem. Because somebody that has a real problem, you don't care who you meet. You just want your problem to be fixed. So, a true, oh my God, I've seen some, some hearts there. Somebody needs to say amen. Some minister should say, thank you, apostle, for that word. Some minister, some prophet, some apostle. I want to hear you. Apostle, fivefold ministers that are blessed by that word. Because, because as, as, as much as we're speaking about true fathers, some fathers are being hurt. Some fathers are hurt. Some fathers are tired. They're, they're tired. Because we, we have a fool. Oh, my God, I'm speaking right now. So the Holy Spirit is just touching some people. We have some fools in the church. You don't want to do nothing. You're lazy. You don't do nothing. You want titles, but you cannot cast one devil. We, we trained you so many times. We showed you so many times. You cannot do nothing. You cannot take care of nothing in the ministry. And we have pastors and leaders that are suffering of burnout because some fools always want you want us to lay our hands on you how many times do we have to lay our hands on you we laid our hands we laid our elbow we jumped you we took you up we turned around with you we 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 told you to 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 jump we told you to slap five people you turned around 50 times and you're still lazy it's time for the sons and daughters to to work also so some of us are suffering of burnout. Okay? I'm sorry, I had to make that, 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 that bracket to speak to some of you all. So as much as the father, a true father, is, 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 is there for your trouble. Because I said number nine, always the father will always be there in your trouble. Always be there in your trouble. Even if he's not there personally, but you have other elders, five full ministers, ministers that you train, 
to release them to minister in the house. But they'll be there in your trouble. So they will be there in your trouble. And number 10, number 10, the true father takes a stand for his son. Oh, let me end up with that. The true father will take a stand for the son. He is not passive in your turmoil. Look at John 10 verses 11, 13. I know it's already 11, but I, I, I want to close with this. John 10 verses 11, 13. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But a hireling. John 10 verses 11, 13. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But a hireling. A mercenary. He who is not the shepherd. who One who does not own the sheep. Sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. Oh my God. Oh my God. When you are, when you are not a true father, what you will do when, when the, 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 the sheep, when the sons and daughters have an issue, you will abandon them and you will flee. They will call, you won't answer some leaders right now in the body of Christ, and I pray none of you that are listening or or, or in, in that cate, cate, category, but some leaders, some set men of some power, uh, so, some houses are mercenaries. We have leaders that are mercenaries. When your saints have trouble, you're hiding, you don't answer your phone call, but if they call you and they tell you they want to give a million dollars to the church, believe me, you will answer the call. Oh, I'm preaching right now. I'm preaching right now. They, they, you, if they call you, they tell you they just won money ball and they, they won uh, the, the, the lottery and they want to sow a million dollars in the church. Believe me, you're going to call. You're going to call right away. I mean, you want to call at four in the morning to get that one million dollars for your ministry. But, the, but you are a mercenary. You are, you are, you are a hireling if you're cheap, if your sons and daughters have issue and you're absent. You don't show up when they're in trouble. But the true father, when the sheep has a problem, when the son has a problem, when the daughter has a problem, he shows up. He's there. He's there. He doesn't flee. Oh my God. Verses 13. The hireling flees because, and the word says later on, does not care about the sheep. Verses John 10 verses 13 says that the mercenary, the, the hireling flees. Why? Because he does not care. He does not care. He does not care about the sheep. A true father will not flee when you have an issue. I know what you can mess up. I know you can fall in sin. But a true father will still stand for his son. He doesn't stand for the sin. But he stands for his son. He will say I stand for him. He messed up. But I'm believing God that he will be restored. I'm believing God that, that he will be taken care of. We are preaching the repair of breaches. We are preaching the God that forgives. We are preaching the God that restores. But why don't we see it in, in the church? Today if a son mess up. You crush him. You destroy him. If he's a minister and he's in your network. He has an issue. He fell in sin. You should stand for him and take care of him but today we are the only army that destroy our own soldiers the church is destroying their soldiers because we are, don't have true fathers we don't have true leaders when you're a true leader your son fell in sin you're going to stand with him you're going to go through the process you're going to cover him and help him and restore him so he can reach his destiny you don't kill him you don't you don't help him to kill himself to suicide but you're a true father you will stand you will not hide because he messed up you will stand with him and you will restore him where are the true fathers where are those that will not just preach and teach and leave but will take care of each and every individual that will take care of every son and daughter through their apostolic team i don't want you to do everything but your team is able to take care of every individual the true father Takes a stand for his son. Takes a stand. If you believe this, give me some hearts right now. He shows up. Thank you, Dr. Lin. He stand, he cover, he correct, he restore. He restore. He don't let you down. 
people of God. The world is looking at the church and, and the world is saying we are imposters. Because we are we are not preaching, we are not we, we are not walking the talk. You know how many ministers we killed, we destroyed them because they messed up once, twice in their life. We killed them, we destroyed them. Some leaders are just waiting for you to mess up to take your sheep. Oh man. I'm preaching right there. Some of you are, 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 you know, if they're not your saints, they're not your sons and daughters, you stole them. You stole them because you have the ministry that is that is up and going. But as you have the great ministry, don't steal the sheep. It will What you sow, you will reap. Because the other one is suffering, you can crush him to get his saints. My God, what are we doing in the, in the body of Christ, people of God? Where are the true fathers? Where are the sons? Where are the, the true fathers that are taking care of the sons and daughters? If I find people coming in my church and you're destroying another minister, I will tell you, shut your mouth and get out of here because I don't want that spirit in the saints and, and the sons and daughters in this house. I will call your leader, I will whoop you, and then I'll bring you to your leader for him to whoop you again. Yes, I said it. That's the problem with the church. We don't want ministers. We have we like we, we like low budget preachers that can say all is good. Come, 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 come in my church. You forgot it's not your church, it's Jesus Christ's church. So you were there to take care. I'm an apostle, I have five four ministers under me. I, I don't have just sons and daughters in my local house. I have a network of sons and daughters under me. It's my role to make sure that those sons and daughters, if they're going through some stuff, that I'm there for them. That I'm there for them. A true father takes a stand for his son. He takes a stand for his son. I thank you, people of God. You were gracious and patient with me. It's 11, uh, uh, it's 10, 11, some, for some regions I did an hour and, and 11 minutes. But if you're blessed, come on, let me see all those that are blessed and, and uh, 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 all those that are there. I really thank the Lord for your presence. If you were blessed, I just, I just want to thank the Lord for you. What I just brought to you, I'm speaking on, 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 on my book and, and, and some of the revelation you've heard is from Fatherless Nation, Fatherless Nation. And this book, I speak on spiritual fathers because we want to put clarity. If you are blessed, thank you. All, all that I'm seeing people speaking about how they were blessed. God bless you, Paul. Thank you. Love it. This was good. Oh, thank God you were blessed. Uh, and and to get this book, to get this book, uh, 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 Fatherless Nation, you can go. Bless, bless, bless. Joy, pure joy. Bless you. Uh, joy, pure joy. Uh, thank you. Oh, bless you. I don't see your name, so I'm seeing uh, you're going for you, the name you're going on, Karen. You're, you, you're, you're teaching us. Bless you. So the book is available. You can get it on my website, uh, and it's very easy. PatrickIsaac.com. Patrick, PatrickIsaac.com. PatrickIsaac.com. You can get that book where we speak, we have more clarity. Because you know what? The reason why I'm preaching and teaching this is because every every saint needs to have a place where they can grow. And reach their destiny. And there's some tremendously anointed ministers. Please know. It's not true that all ministers are mercenaries. There, there's some mercenaries. I know there are. But some ministers are desiring to make sure that you're blessed. To make sure that you reach your destiny. I'll say this. A true apostle. His, a, a pastoral church. Listen to this. And I will close with that. A pastoral church. The the people raises the pastor. The pastoral church, the people raises the pastor. They are cheerleading a pastor and his family to their destiny. But a true apostolic church, the apostle with an apostolic team raises an apostolic house, raises the people and, and, and releases the people through their teaching so that they can reach their destiny. So I bless God for your life. Uh, I'm leaving for, I will be in Haiti 
because we, we, we're establishing a ministry in Haiti, so pray for us. We'll be in Haiti, and I don't think I'll be able to, uh, I will probably do the next scope, and I want I want you to connect to, to, to follow me on, on, on Periscope, Dr. Patrick Isaac. But if you go on my website, website patrickisaac.com, you can like my page on Facebook, and, and you can like uh, my Instagram and, 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 and Periscope. Just follow me on Periscope, but we will be there next week, probably next week on on Wednesday, next Wednesday, 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 we will continue on, on, on the spiritual fathers. Because next week, I will want to touch the function. The function. What is his role in your life? What does he do? Practically. It's not enough to say he's, a, he, he's, an, he's an apostle. But practically. What is a, a father? A true father? What's the role? What's the function of a father? That's next Wednesday. So I bless God for your life. I thank the Lord for your life and, and stay tuned. And all of you, all of you that are there tomorrow night, my daughter, Prophetess Monique Hobbs, will be touching sonship. We'll speak to the sons. Because as much as we have, we need good fathers, but we need sons also. The work cannot be done. We cannot advance the kingdom of God without understanding sonship so tomorrow she'll be online with and she will speak on sonship so get ready for that connect with her and i want to thank all of you apostle apostles prophets evangelists pastors teaching teachers for the the followers and and, and apostle uh, uh, the apostle of periscope apostle john eckard that that also uh, 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 swipe his followers all of you that swipe your followers all the apostles some of you i don't know your name but i just bless you and uh, uh, apostle LaShawn cole bless you and every and each ministry thank you and bless you from being there and we will talk real soon let the lord bless you and let this anointing be a blessing on your life. Kingdom blessings to you.